Hey everyone, this is Chris here, and today is April 24th, 2023. Got a really exciting topic for you today. In this video, we're going to be discussing the career of Marcelo Rios, who is the only tennis player to achieve the number one ranking in the world without winning a Grand Slam title. Now, before we get into this topic, I'd like to encourage you guys, if you're new to this channel, to please take a minute to hit the subscribe button down below. That'll keep you notified of any time we release additional content like this. And of course, if you enjoy videos like this, then please be sure to share this video with your friends. All right, guys, without further ado, let's get into it. So Marcelo Rios was born on December 26th of 1975, and he was the first and I believe only Chilean player to reach the number one uh, ranking in the world, which he managed to do back in 1998. Uh, an interesting trivia question about Marcelo Rios is that he was the uh, player who dethroned Pete Sampras after his 102-week uh, run at the top of the game, which went back to 19, February of 1996, I believe. Uh, Marcelo Rios would start off with a very good career in the juniors where he would uh, reach the number one ranking in the world. He was a, uh, I believe he was a Grand Slam champion with the juniors, although I'm not 100% uh, certain of that. I do know that he would uh, have some good results when he first got going on the tour, uh, gradually working his way up. And then in 1996, when he was 20 years old, he would manage to have his first season where he would be ranked inside of the top 20 uh, at the year end. So he had a very good start to that season. And then 1997 is really when things got going for Rios. He would capture his first Masters 1000 title at the Monte Carlo uh, Open. And he would start to show signs of promised that year he had a very consistent solid year in 1997 reaching the fourth round of every Grand Slam event and he made the quarterfinals uh, I believe at the US Open and also at the Australian Open. Marcelo Rios in my opinion was one of those players you could just tell from an early age he had the potential to really do anything in the game. He had so much talent in terms of his touch uh, and the fact that he had a big serve, was a left-handed player, he had a lot of things really going for him. He was very fast around the court. He could come up with incredible shots that really no one else could come up with, could manage to replicate. But uh, unfortunately, it just didn't quite work out for him in those big moments, and he wound up losing some matches that you would kind of favor him to win. But regardless, uh, in 1998, Marcelo Rios would have his first big opening to make a major breakthrough on the tour when he made the finals of the Austrian Open, and his opponent was uh, Peter Korda. Now, at the time, Korda was about 30 years old. He had been in this position a couple of times before, but in a lot of senses, this is a story that's very similar to Andre Agassi and Andreas Gomez, from about eight years before when Rios was heavily favored to beat Korda. In fact, he had beaten him the year before in the first round at the Australian Open. Now, Rios would wind up choking in this match and he choked really badly. He would lose the match in straight sets, 6-2, 6-2, 6-2. 6-2. And of course, this would be Peter Korda's only Grand Slam title. Now, a couple months later, Rios would continue his amazing form by capturing his second Masters 1000 title at Indian Wells. He would then complete the Sunshine Double just a couple weeks later by winning Miami, and he would defeat Andre Agassi in the finals, and I believe this is the match where he would take over the number one ranking from Pete Sampras. Now, Marcelo Rios was not able to play in Monte Carlo, so he lost a few, or he lost some of his ranking points from that. But he was able to win Rome that year, which would be his third Masters 1000 title. And again, this is just an amazing performance from a guy that's only maybe 22. 
again, things were seemingly working out really well for him. In 99, he would capture uh, an additional two titles after winning uh, Hamburg. And then in 2000, um, he would have more injury problems. I think his back, in this case, was more of the uh, problem for him. He would win only one title in 2000. 2001 would be a little bit of a step back in the right direction. Rios was able to get his ranking into the top 50, and he would win a couple more ATP titles that year, smaller events like 250, 500 level. 2002 would be kind of an up and down year for Rios, but during the points when he was on, he actually did quite well. He would manage to reach the quarterfinals of the Australian Open, and he would have a very good showing again in Miami. And then in 2003, unfortunately, his injury problems would just reach another level where he really wouldn't be able to continue his uh, game at the top level anymore. And he was still really young at this point. He was only, I think, about 27 years old. So time is still kind of on his side, but unfortunately, his body just couldn't hold up with it any longer. And he wound up uh, having to retire in 2004 um, just because of all the injuries that he had. One interesting thing about Marcelo Rios was that he would make a return briefly uh, on the Champions Tour in 2006. The way it worked back then was you had to wait two years from the time you retired before you were eligible to join the Champions Tour, assuming that you had the qualifications to do that. You had to either win a Grand Slam title, a Davis Cup title, be ranked number one in the world. And I think it had to be one of those three. And of course, Rios was a former number one, so he was able to join the Champions Tour. And he dominated the first year that he was a part of that, winning six events. And he would continue to have success on the Champions Tour in later years, but he was still plagued a lot by injury problems. So unfortunately, I think with Rios, um, I look at his career as being something where maybe if he had been healthier, he could have won a couple of Grand Slam titles. Um, I think the opportunities were there in the sense that he was really coming into his best years. There was a bit of an opening here for Rios, but unfortunately because of those injuries, it just didn't quite work out for him. It really is a shame because I do think he was a very talented player that just, unfortunately his body just couldn't hold up. And he never really got that chance to uh, show the world how good he was and, and to win a Grand Slam title. Let me know what you guys think of Marcelo Rios' career in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I will see you at the next one.